Are you looking to take your running to the next level? Unlock your running potential with these four essential hip mobility exercises. In this training and episode, I'll guide you through a series of must-try exercises that will greatly improve your running form and have those legs feeling looser during a run. Having proper hip mobility is crucial for runners as it allows for a more efficient stride, reduces the risk of injuries, and enhances overall performance. These exercises specifically target the hip area, helping to increase flexibility, range of motion, and stability. Now, I know this is the audio or video version of the why and the how we do these hip mobility exercises, but I do have the instructional video that you can actually follow along and learn how to do them. So you can just click the YouTube link in the show notes below and save that video on YouTube. So you can either hit the like button and then it goes into your like folder in YouTube and you can go back and reference it in case you forget the exercises and how to do them. Um, or you can create your own little playlist of exercises that you learn from the Healthy Runner podcast. So it makes it really easy for you to be able to go back and actually implement these exercises. And while you're over there on YouTube learning how to do these exercises, it would be super helpful for me if you don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can actually get notified when I release a specific exercise series just like this that I do every couple of months that's more of a kind of a quality how-to video um, to help your running. So for context in what we're gonna be talking about today, This really relates to if you've been listening to the podcast for a while or this YouTube channel, you know that we help you grow in your running journey with our Spark Healthy Runner six-step plan. And personally, I know how hard it is to grow as a runner. Heck, it took me like 12 years to come up with the six-step plan. But there are six parts of your running journey that need to be optimized so you can run strong and last long. What are those parts? Mindset, strength training the running you're actually doing, so the run plan, nutrition, recovery, and race strategy. And when you execute these six parts of your running journey, you'll not only feel more confident in getting stronger and faster, but you'll stay healthy and enjoy the process of running again and crush some races along the way. So in today's episode, I'm going to teach you about this kind of non-sexy part of being a runner, and it's filling the recovery bucket. Recovery is actually a part of the training, and you can actually get the latest Spark Healthy Runner ebook, free resource, The Ultimate Guide to Recovery for Runners, with a ton of supplemental resources, visuals, video content that helps provide context for what you're going to learn about today. And within this kind of recovery blueprint, I take you through seven specific recovery techniques that we use as runners, and you will learn how to incorporate rest days, sleep foam rolling, massage, stretching, compression socks, and proper foot care, all super important for your training. And these have been like the tried, true, tested strategies that have kept all the runners that I work with on a one-on-one basis as a running physical therapist and run coach staying healthy so they can actually enjoy their training. And we can continue to challenge ourselves, right? Like this morning, I just did a hard long run um, with some interval paced miles in it. And I was like working hard, challenging myself. And I'm like, Hey man, I'm 43. Like I'm working it. I'm, I'm challenging myself because I'm looking for a marathon PR. So whatever your running goal is, if you're looking to challenge yourself, you need to optimize recovery. And it's often the forgotten part of being a runner. So Go ahead, download your free ebook. Um, You can go right to learn.sparkhealthyrunner.com forward slash recovery and get the resource and all the bonus content, or just click the link that I have for you in the show notes so you can get your download. So let's get into today's topic. The hips don't lie as Shakira says, right? So why is hip mobility important for runners? There's a bunch of reasons, and I'm going to give you some kind of context for why you should consider actually implementing these into your daily routine. So number one, if you're a runner who has had low back pain, a lot of times 
we have low back pain, either we sit too long and you have sitting related low back pain where you get pain when you bend forward, when you go to put on your socks, your shoes, um, if you're long car rides, right? Like that kind of classic disc pain that you get from low back pain. A lot of times it's due to lack of hip mobility and not moving from the hip joint. So these hip mobility exercises we're going to do are going to help promote mobility at the hip, taking stress off your lumbar spine. So it's going to be super helpful for you if you've had a history of low back pain, which pretty much 60 to 70% of the population has. So I'm imagining a lot of you runners out there also have low back pain. Um, also, if you've had a history of an impingement in the hip, or you've ever had pain in the front of your hip, groin area, maybe even told you have tight hips, maybe even told you've had impingement, maybe even told you have a labral tear in your hip. Um, that was me, right? I have what we call FAI or femoral acetabular impingement syndrome on both sides. I've had a labral tear. That's actually how I started my running journey was actually after getting surgery in my hip, hip arthroscopy. And then I actually started running after that. So that's kind of when my running journey began. But if you have hip impingement, these are going to be super helpful for you. If you have had a history of tight hip flexors, so hip flexors are the muscles in the front of the hips. So if you feel tight in the front of the hips, like you feel like your muscles are tight, or you might have been a um, performing art artist athlete. So maybe you're a dancer, maybe you're a gymnast, maybe you did cheer um, earlier in life, and you've always like felt like your hips were tight, and you know that. And now you're a runner because now you're an adult and you're probably not doing cheer or adult gymnastics or dance for that matter. And now you're running because like, that's a great form of exercise for us to do as adults. Right. And, but your hip flexors are still tight. So this is going to be for you, or it could be that you're feeling like you can't open your stride or you're just not good at fast running. And maybe you've tried some faster running. So you've tried going at your threshold pace with your tempo runs that we've talked about on the podcast before with coach cat, or you've really tried to open up your stride and maybe tried strides or striders as we call them, but you just feel like your hips are tight and like your hips can't open up. These exercises are going to be for you or honestly, if you're middle-aged and you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and you just feel like your hips are kind of stiff and they feel stiff, um, especially after you sit for a while, you do a long car ride, maybe you have a sitting desk job and your hips just feel stiff, these exercises are going to be for you. So most likely you fell into one of those categories. And if you're really looking to run fast, optimize your running form, we do need proper hip mobility. So the other reason and last reason I'll give you is if you're looking to activate those hip muscles and I have a great kind of hip activation series of exercise on my YouTube channel as well. It's one of the most watched videos, um, just like the hip mobility one is, um, that you can really turn those muscles on. You need the mobility before you can kind of turn them on, if that makes sense. If you don't have mobility, it's hard to actually strengthen muscles through a specific range of motion. So if you're really looking to activate your muscles, your hip muscles, turn those suckers on, turn the glutes on, then you need some mobility. So I'm going to give you kind of four specific exercises. And if you incorporate these four must try hip mobility exercise into your running routine, then you're going to watch your form and your performance soar. So remember always, we want to listen to our bodies. This is like the, um, this is the, the safety talk right here. We got to listen to your bodies and make sure that these are pain free. You know, you're starting out gently and then gradually increasing the amount of motion, the mobility, make sure you're not compensating at the lumbar spine and other areas. So maybe the pelvis is dropping and you're going to really see that your hips are going to feel looser. They're not going to feel as tight and they're not going to hold you back from reaching your running goals. So let's get into these four essential exercises. The first two are going to be pre-run exercises. And these I would say are more mobility exercises. The last two are going to be for after your runs or after your strength sessions. And those are going to be more flexibility exercises. The mobility exercises are going to target more the joint 
and actually movement around the joint. The flexibility exercise is going to target more the muscles and actually work on elongating the muscles. All right. So exercise number one is going to be hip rocking. So for this exercise, you're going to be on your hands and knees and you're going to simply rock your hips back. So butt back to your heels, but you're going to make sure, but, but <laughs> talking about the butt here, um, you're going to make sure that you don't bend from your lumbar spine. So your lower back wants to maintain at the same angle. It's going to remain flat. Think flat tabletop. Don't arch and don't round. You're staying straight and think of hinging from the hips. So usually the cue that I would give someone if, you know, I was with someone like in person when I was in the clinic and treating patients um, would be if you just put one finger in the front of the hip area and you're thinking of folding from your hip joint. So you're bending from your hips without bending from the spine. So again, I know I'm kind of verbally describing this. You can actually see the exercise and me describe it in the instructional video in the show notes below. All right. So don't forget about that. But that's going to be hip rocking. So you're going to go back and forth. It's a mobility exercise. Maybe you hold for a second or two and then you come back, hold for a second or two and then come back. And then I love to do this exercise kind of in a neutral position at the hips. So the knees under the hips, and then you're going to actually bring the knees wider than the hips and then work mobility there, which is actually going to be a nice dynamic stretch for your adductors or your groin muscles. So for those of you who have tight groin muscles, tight adductors, you have a history of adductor strains, that's going to be the exercise for you. And then the third position I like to do this is in like in a frog position where your knees are turning out, feet are together, and now you're rocking back, taking up all that hip mobility without bending from the spine and then doing that 10 times. So I usually like to do like 10, 10, 10. If I'm really short on time before I run, I might do five, 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 right? Let's be honest here. I'm giving you the real deal feel here. Um, so that's exercise number one, hip rocking. Exercise number two, hip circles. And you've probably heard of hip circles before. I guess I'll give my little take on hip circles is, I think of this as a controlled movement exercise that you're actually taking all ranges of the hip joint. So the hip joint is a ball and socket joint. So the socket is the acetabulum. It's the cup of your pelvis. And then you have the ball, which is the femur bone. And this ball, you wanna think about going all around the socket when you do your hip circle. So you're gonna actually start by being in a position of on your hands and knees again, just like the first exercise. So we're in this, what we call quadruped position or simply on your hands and knees. You're going to bring your knee up and around out to the side and then kick it back behind you, almost like a donkey kick. If you've ever heard of that exercise. And when you do this, squeeze the glute muscle, squeeze the butt. It's all about the butt today. Uh, we're squeezing the glute max muscle hold for a second at the top and then bring it back around. So you're bringing the leg up around out to the side, bring it back, contract that glute and then bring it forward. And usually I like to do about five hip circles in one direction. So we got to go like clockwise direction and then we're going to reverse it, reverse, reverse, right? You're going to go in the opposite direction. So now we're kicking backward, squeeze the glute again, hips don't lie right? Shakira said it. And then we're going to circle it up and around. And then we're going to donkey kick straight back, squeeze the glute, and then circle it up and around. All right. So those are going to be your hip circles. And it's great because we're getting movement around the joint, but it's all controlled. You're using your muscles. So we're actually, you know, serving two purposes here. It's like a little BOGO sale, buy one, get one, right? We're getting hip mobility as well as hip activation. So you can't go wrong with that. And that's why those are really important before your runs. And just so you guys know, like context and how I usually order this for my runners. And I talked about this in our foam roller episode. If you remember, do your soft tissue work first. So foam rolling first, get some blood flow in there. No more than 30 seconds per muscle group. If you missed that episode, go back. I don't have the episode number offhand, but scroll back a little bit more from where you're listening to this. You'll find the foam roller um, episode. And then we do mobility. 
So it's kind of soft tissue care first, get blood flow going, stimulate nervous system, and then mobility. So these are two specific hip mobility exercises before your run. So now let's give you two after your run. So these are going to be, you finished your run, you finished your strength training workout, you have blood flow in. This is where we actually do static stretching and stretching, right? We don't do static stretching before a run. We did movement-based and we would do a dynamic warm-up before our runs. There's a five-minute dynamic warm-up on my YouTube channel as well. If you're looking for a dynamic warm-up to do before your runs, but we do our mobility first and then our flexibility at the end. So our flexibility, two important muscles that usually contribute to tight hips are number one, the hip flexors. So this is our iliopsoas muscle. So this is right in the front of the hip and it can sometimes cause some deeper tightness in the pelvic area because of the muscle attachments connect to your lumbar spine and in the pelvis. And the common mistake I see with hip flexor stretching is that everyone takes up too much hip mobility. So for this exercise, you're going to be in a half kneeling position. So you're going to drop down on one knee, the other legs in front, the leg that is on the ground that you're on your knee is going to be the stretch leg. So that's going to be the muscle that you're actually stretching in the front. Now, envision kind of shifting forward. And you've probably seen this stretch before. You've probably done it before. We don't want to just shift forward. What we need to do first and foremost is actually engage your core, your lower abdominals specifically, and your glute. And you're going to do what we call a pelvic tilt. You're going to tuck under essentially. So tuck under, hold. And now you can shift forward and you should feel a nice pulling sensation stretch in the front of your hip, right where that hip flexor muscle is. So that is kind of the best way to do that hip flexor stretch. The most common, you know, mistakes you see, someone shifts forward too much and all they're doing is taking that ball in the socket joint I was talking about before and just shoving it anteriorly forward. And that's really just causing, it's probably going to cause more problems to your hip joint in the future because that is a, what we call this anterior glide syndrome, a little too beyond the scope of this episode, but that can create some hip issues like with your hip joint and you might have hip pain, hip instability, things like that. So in order to actually maximize the stretch to the muscle, then we want to make sure that we are doing that tilt first. Okay. So tilt first and then shift forward, feel a nice gentle stretch, and don't arch your back. You want to make sure that back is nice and flat as you do this. So again, if you view the video, you'll actually see I had Allie, who is actually, shout out to Allie, our podcast editor. She was the model for this video. So if you ever want to see what Allie looks like, uh, you can check out that video, and hopefully she gets a a kick out of this when she is editing uh, this episode. But you can check out Allie. She demonstrates what not to do first, And then she demonstrates how to tuck under, contract the abs, contract the glute muscle. Fourth and final hip mobility exercise is going to be the quad stretch or really specifically quads, if you haven't realized, is made up of four muscles, hence why it's called quads. One of those muscles is a two joint muscle, meaning it crosses the knee joint as well as the hip joint. And that is your rectus femoris muscle. And this is the most common one to be tight in runners. And especially because it's a two joint muscle, usually the muscle length is restricted and the tight hip flexors and the tight quads limit your ability to bring the hip behind you and open up that stride. So improving the hip flexibility here of these muscles can help open up that stride. In order to do a quad stretch, and you guys have definitely seen this before, like think about, have you ever seen where you grab the back of your leg and bend your knee, right? So you're just grabbing your foot. You've done it before, like whether it's a team sport or after an exercise class, they're like, grab your foot and just bend your knee as far as possible. The big mistake most people make with this is they bend their knee fully, but the knee is actually in front of the hip joint. In order to actually stretch this two joint muscle, you need to make sure the knee is behind the hip joint. The easiest way to do this without compensating um, and arching your back is to actually just put your foot up on 
either a sofa, um, if you have really long legs like I do. Um, I love to use, if I'm in the gym, I will stand sideways on a treadmill. And for those of you who have treadmills at home, you know, you got the bars of the treadmill, put your foot up on that bar. And now you don't have to worry about balance. You have a bar in front of you, you can hold on to on the treadmill. And now all you need to do is just like we did for the hip flexor stretch, tuck under, tighten the lower abs. That's like the prerequisite here. We got to tighten those lower abs first, and then you're going to actually sink down into the stretch. So your foot is up behind you. Your knee is bent. We tuck under, and now you feel a nice pull on your quads. You're going to know you're doing this correctly if there's daylight in between your heel and your butt. Like you actually want to have some space there because that means you're actually stretching that muscle at the hip. And then you will feel that nice deep stretch into the quad area. So let's talk how many should you do? Like what are the reps? How many times, right? All of that, um, that you're probably wondering the first two hip mobility exercises I mentioned, like doing either sets of 10 or five, and usually like one set sufficient. Um, but for these last two stretches or flexibility exercises, these are going to be a longer hold time. So try to hold for a good 30 to 60 seconds and try to relax into it. Do some deep breathing, do some diaphragmatic breathing, belly breathing, right? And really try to relax. And that will help calm down your nervous system after your run, after your workout, and allow you to kind of relax and improve the length of that muscle and that tissue. So these are going to be longer hold times, but you only need to do two to five reps, depending upon if this is a big problem area for you or a trouble spot. Like for all the runners that I work with, you know, within my high touch point one-on-one program who are battling, whether it is hip pain that they're battling or most commonly like runner's knee, that's a common one that they're going to have tightness in these areas. And I find the contributing factors or like their specific problem areas. So if this is a specific problem area for you where you are tight in your hips, then you probably want to, you know, dedicate a little more time, maybe do five repetitions, that 30 to 60 second hold. And hopefully this was helpful for you kind of going over these four, really my four top hip mobility exercise, my go-tos, um, that I implement with the runners that I work with. And if you need clarity and focus on how to integrate recovery exercises like these, right? So today we really focused in one area, the hip area um, for tight hips. But if you need clarity and focus to add them into your run and strength training plans, and you're not exactly sure how to do that, that's exactly what we do with our Spark Healthy Runner coaching program. Um, We teach you how to grow as a runner to not only crush your running goal, but avoid feeling frustrated because you either get injured or you're not getting any faster. And we act as your guide in mastering the six key steps in your running journey. So the mindset, strength training, structured run plan, nutrition, recovery, and race strategy. All right. And those are really providing you the structure of these exercises. I have seen personally is the big difference maker out there um, in the run coaching world and space, uh, just because a lot of the runners that work with us have come from other programs and there are awesome tacticians, right? The X's and O's of running and the run plan. But they don't provide the structure of the specific exercises, whether it is strength exercises or recovery exercises like the ones we've talked about today. So that's where we really prioritize because our goal is not only for you to get a PR at your next race, but it's so you can do it six months from now, six years from now, 16 years from now. Um, right. So we want to be able to run until our, uh, 80s, maybe 90s. I don't know. 100. Who knows, right? You never know. Um, So just like a well-built house, right, will require a little maintenance and bring you a lifetime of memories for you and your family. Like that's what we want for your running. So if you want to learn more about our Healthy Runner Signature Coaching Program, you can schedule a call now by just going to learn.sparkhealthyrunner.com. That is all I have for you today. So this was a a short and sweet one. Um, This has just been something on my mind. 
And this YouTube video that is linked below has gotten a lot of views and is I've gotten a lot of comments on it. So I figured I'd share it here on the podcast and talk about the why and the how, um, you know, you as a runner should be implementing these into your training. Um, I hope it was helpful for you. Um, if it was like copy this link, wherever you're watching this, listening to this, share it with a running friend, you know, um, who has tight hips as always guys, let's maintain a strong mind, a strong body, and let's just keep on running until next time.